good. Um, we are just about to start, and um, the council members are about to walk in. We want to welcome them into the hall, and uh, we are waiting. Thank you for coming to listen to the inaugural lecturer of our professor J.B. Okeruwa. Thank you. is about to reach we have uh, basically we have two processions we have the council procession we have the academic procession the academic procession carries the professors and the lecturers of the university we have the council procession Just uh, about to usher in the academic procession and the council procession. The council procession is led by the chair of the council, and we have the academic procession that's led by the registrar of the university. And so we want to welcome all of us into this session. As we had said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when the session uh, starts, we would request ourselves to kindly arise and we will remain standing until all the anthems are sung. Thank you. Good. The procession is on the way coming. Slowly and steadily, the procession is coming. We want to welcome all the public who have gathered here in our Rongo University first inaugural lecturer by Professor J.B. Okeo. That is where we are today. This is the first inaugural lecture that is going to be given by Professor J.B. Thank you.
Kenobo Lecture, given by Professor Keo Owur, JB. Welcome our council members, please welcome. We welcome you into this occasion. We want to appreciate all of us in this occasion. We want to appreciate all of us. We want to appreciate all of us in this occasion. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's just remain standing. Let's remain standing, ladies and gentlemen. We are organizing ourselves. These are the council members. Standing East African Anthem. <laughs> Good. While we are standing, could we have Rongo University?
May we be seated. As I hand over the remaining session to our Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic to take us through the remaining session of the program. Professor, welcome. Thank you, uh, Wilson. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Um, Professor George Barack Okeo Wall, who is the main speaker today, the chairperson of council, members of council, vice chancellor, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to listen to Professor J.B. Okeo Wall's inaugural lecture. And because uh, we do not have a lot of time, I think we'll have to cut out a lot of the activities and um, straight away, Professor JB, members of council and colleagues, I would want to introduce the committee that organized this inaugural lecture. If you can please stand up, if you can stand where you are. Um, we have uh, Professor Michael Tabo Mabururu, who was a member of the committee. We have Dr. Florence Odiwar, who was a member of the committee. Uh, other members uh, are not here today. Uh, Dr. Anino has somebody sick in Hosso and uh, so could not be here. Thank you, may be seated. Uh, may all the professors, the full professors, please stand where you are. Thank you very much, uh, the full professors. Now I was going to introduce others, or they'll be introduced later. <laughs> but let me start with the fullest of the full professors uh, Professor <laughs> Samuel Gudu, the Vice Chancellor of Rongo University. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, Professor J.B. Okeo Award, the guest of honor today. Please welcome. Professor Peter Kisinyo, a professor of soil science uh, in the School of Agriculture. Please, if you can wave. Thank you. You may sit down. Professor Joseph Aguyo Nyamori, Professor of Horticulture, School of Agriculture. Please, you may sit down. Uh, Professor Stanley Sitote Muse, uh, the Professor of uh, Civil and Structural Engineering. Of course, uh, also a Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of administration, finance, and planning. Prof, give you may seat. I introduced the professors because inaugural lectures are given by professors, so uh, council, you may know who the professors are, and uh, JB, you may know who your colleagues are who have escorted you to this occasion. I may now, other invited guests, let's start with the the academic staff, academic staff of Rongo University, starting with deans, heads, and uh, other academic staff, please, if you may stand where you are, except the professors and, ah, okay. Uh, uh, among these academic staff, uh, uh, Professor JB and uh, the council, we have associate professors, we have heads and deans, and other faculty. Please be seated. We are making it brief because uh, of the time factor. Um, now, uh, Professor JB, uh, members of council, I wish to call on the Deputy Vice Chancellor, uh, Administration, finance and planning. But before I do that, what the arrangement is going to be, I think that uh, we will 
project. We will project what the professor is going to present on uh, which wall? On this wall. What that means is members of council, who after the introductions, we may have to move and sit in the front row seats so that we can be able to follow what the professor is presenting. Um, now I wish to introduce the professor Stanley Shitote, the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of uh, administration finance and planning to make a few remarks, invite the Vice Chancellor who then can take off from this stage. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ngwari. Um, Professor J.B. Hokeo Wall, our main guest today and speaker at this inaugural lecture, uh, Chairperson of Council, Council members, our Vice Chancellor, professors, academic staff, all invited guests. I see, I think we also have our students. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, indeed, I'll be very brief. Um, happy to talk, to have a word at this uh, very first inaugural lecture of Rongo University. And um, really wish uh, Professor Okeo War a very happy afternoon as he delivers his lecture. Um, we have been introduced, but obviously there are a number of uh, people in the in the house who, have, who are yet to be introduced. So at this point, indeed, it is my humble pleasure to invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor Samuel Good, to introduce uh, Chairperson of Council and other members of Council, then we proceed with the program. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Security. Uh, ladies, hell has broken loose here. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon once again. Mine is to introduce our chair of council and then she will get opportunity to her members of council. Our chair of council, Dr. Rachel Asike Masake. who is the chair of Rongo University Council, is an academician in her own right. She has worked in very many places. She has worked in the international program for many years, many, many years. And then she has served in very many NGOs as the CEO, she has also served as chair and member of council of various universities. We are, as Rongo University, blessed to have her, Dr. Rachel Masake, as the chair of council. She was a member of Maseno University College, just when Maseno was starting, and she got opportunity to be in that board. And as I said, she has been in many university councils. Now, she has brought a wealth of experience to our board. And as Rongo University, we are extremely grateful to God and the government of Kenya that has given us an opportunity to guide this university, the young university, to grow just the way she was at the beginning of Maseno University. And now you know Maseno University is definitely much, much bigger than Rongo University. So we are blessed to have her today. We have had a long council meeting, but we thank God that council has got opportunity to come 
and witness the first inaugural lecture of this university. Without taking much time, I want to request Dr. Rachel Masake to take this opportunity to introduce the members of Council of Rongo University. For a while, uh, oh, Kenya has progressed. <laughs> nice to meet all of you. Good afternoon. It's truly my honor and privilege to introduce the council members that are here. Uh, let me start right from my right. And I, I like people being heard. So just say your name. Please don't say too many other things. Thank you. I'm Dr. George Ochiri, member of council. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon. Ivan Zatambo, member of council representing PS State Department for University Education. My name is Festus Mwanzi. What time to PS National Treasury? Thank you. Oh. Good afternoon. My name is David Mshila, Independent Council Member. Good afternoon. My name is William Amade, Independent Council Member. Good afternoon. My name is Kenneth Kipona, Council Member. Good afternoon. Kathy Mputia, Council Member. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, the one thing that they didn't tell you what they do, we are a good mixture here, right from uh, those who are still active CEOs of organizations like uh, SACOS, Harambe, legal team, um, uh, those who are dealing with environment and so on. So you have quite a mixture that should be in this kind of setting. So I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you, the University Council that has just mentioned their names, members of the University Board Management, starting with Professor Gudu here, members of the University Fraternity, uh, all invited guests, although I may not know all your names, but you are all invited for this special occasion. And all protocols observed, ladies and gentlemen, it's really a great afternoon for me. It is with great pleasure that I welcome all of you to Rongo University. Many of you I've known this university for all kinds of things, but today we are here because we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to everyone, each one of you, for being here on this auspicious occasion. It's a very special occasion in that we are having the first inaugural lecture. And I'm glad to be here when that first lecture is being given. So I can be part of the history, isn't it? <laughs> of Rongo University. Uh, your presence here today attests of your strong support for Rongo University. We as a council, we appreciate that that we have a strong support right here. I know Rongo University has nurtured many great minds. The first mind I met that graduated from Rongo University, you can't believe where, in Lodwa. And I wondered how could a Lodwa scientist get to know there is a university called Rongo? But that is how far you go all over this country. So this inaugural lecture on Nyando wetlands of Lake Victoria Basin 
ecosystem dynamics well and the case for sustainable development. Many people see wetlands as useless. When I was a kid, we avoided wetlands. But today, that's where the wealth is, by Professor J.B. O'Kale O'Gore. This is great. I look forward to what you are going to tell us. This inaugural lecture marks the beginning of a new tradition for the university to recognize some of the researchers, immense contributions in fields such as agriculture, food security, the environment and sustainable development. It's also an opportunity to present to the university's academic and non-academic communities, as well as engage with the larger community on some of the cutting edge innovations. Those innovations are very important to us. And technologies that could improve knowledge transfer and solutions to societal challenges. Many of you may not know that actually universities are graded best on your publications, on your innovations. So for me, this is very, very important for Rongo University. This event clearly demonstrates our determination to expand our research activities by contributing to scholarly work on a national and international scale. This is consistent with our goal of becoming a hub for intellectual development, a model of research activity and a resource for professional development. This event will reinforce the university commitment to aligning our research activity with the African Union agenda for 2063. You know, even the continent has its agenda, and I'm excited that Rongo University is part of that group that is trying to fulfill that agenda and the sustainable development goals. Kenya Vision 2030 and the Big Four Agenda. Yes, the Big Four Agenda, whether some vilify it or not, we are part of it. I'm very grateful to be part of this event. We are extremely proud of all of our researchers for the accomplishments and dedication to putting Rongo University on the international map. You know, quite often when I come across, uh, especially magazines on agriculture, check, is there a paper from Rongo University? So that's how excited I get. I would especially like to commend Professor Worry's efforts. Prof, you don't believe it. <laughs> commend Professor Worry's efforts for his excellent work and significant contribution to knowledge as well as for setting a good exam. a good example as an outstanding scholar. He is a distinguished scientist and we are grateful to him for agreeing to deliver the inaugural lecture. With these few remarks, I would like to formally open the first inaugural lecture of Rongo University. 
once again, Rob, welcome, and may God richly bless all of us as we listen. And as I end, I want to say that I look forward to many more lectures like the one Professor is going to do. And let Rongo be out there, known for the great service that we are able to do. Village setting is actually very good for research. At least they are not like the streets of Nairobi. What do you do research on there? But here, you have the opportunity. Karibu sana. Thank you. Fine. Thank you very much, Professor Nkwari. I've been uh, requested and given opportunity to request Professor Joas Barakoke War to introduce his family, and then uh, we pick from there. JB, please. We normally call him JB. I think most people may not know he's Joas. <laughs> Joas Barak, okay. Chair, Council Rongo University, members of the Council, Professor Samuel Gudo, our Vice Chancellor, dear colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I have been asked to introduce my family. And if you look at the title of that, th th that presentation, it says, my family will arise from an area called Nyanda Wetland. There are only a few of them that have arrived and uh, I'd like to ask them to stand up as I introduce them. <clears throat> to begin with, the lady on my earthly left side is my wife, Madame Aska, Adede Okeo. She has come here ideally as a member of staff because I'm here. I hope you will, you will welcome her. Karibu. Then I want to introduce in a similar fashion my mother and sister-in-law, Madame Doris yeah, okay, over. Doris is the wife of my late brother, who on his uh, own capacity was a social scientist, well-schooled with a PhD in Nyanda wetland issues, migratory patterns of people living in Nyanda wetland is the body is living under another wetland. The heart is in heaven. Then uh, I want to introduce that young girl, Christian Okeo, my last and first born. 
Not that I don't have other children, I function. <laughs> but because she helps me do a lot of other things, including scientific issues, data collection, and so on, in Nyanda wetlands, that's where she lives. So uh, I have other children. One of them is a PhD student here at Rongo. Another one is also an environmental scientist here, now living in, in Embu. Another one is an environmental scientist, ecologist, living in the US with a PhD degree over the last five, no, ten, six years. And that's our family, a uh, very close family. They are listening to you. I hope that this thing is real and connected today. <coughs> then we have uh, Mr. Fanuel Akongo Origa. He comes here in his own capacity as a member and a leader of Nyanda Wetland community. He is my first cousin. His mother follows my mother, what I think the people called in the womb. My mother got married in this wetland, got stuck there, and brought her other three sisters. One of them happens to be his mother, and his mother misbehaved and married to my brother. So he's also my son, at the same time, my brother. This is how environmental comp complexity operates. Then I have uh, Madame Bo. I think once I've introduced you, you can just sit down. Uh, Margaret Kisera is the wife of my first cousin who is also here. Margaret lives and works in Nyando Wetlands. She is a rice farmer. I have engineer David Onyango, who has been with me for many, many years, including today, although he comes from a place called Alego, where we hope that some of you will get the president arising from. He doesn't have that big hope, but I think he has a big heart to be with me all the time I am in the field collecting data, writing my reports, driving, driving me around even when I come to Rome, David Karibu. Then I have, um, you know, anytime you are doing research, you must get permission from the local people, the local chiefs, all the way up the upper side. Eli Otieno Oweti is my son. Again, very complicated relationship because his mother is a cousin to my father, first cousin, and his is also my son. So he happens to be the chief for now and over the last 10 or so years of people living in Nando wetlands. Not just an assistant chief, but a chief. Not, not uh, these people you find in the county. He has that authority, so if there is no chief here, he can give us the authority to keep going with this function. Can you believe? We have uh, this gentleman here, uh, Professor Good. This was your student here. Uh, the only thing that you didn't know is that this is the president of the Republic of Kenya by name. 
He uh, is called, uh, I fear to say, Jomo Kenyatta. Because I think he's the agent of our young president now ruling. And that is his name in our home. That is his name in the national ID card. He is my first cousin. His father follows my father to the womb. Actually, he's a resident here of Rongo here. He went to school here. His wife also went to school here and graduated two years ago. Uh, and uh, she couldn't come because she's working in Siala. But um, he's representing, representing our family here. Karibu. Then we have the big man in our home. He looks small, economically so. If, if today you are looking for fuel and you don't have a motorbike like this size, then of course you will not get even from Rondo to here. People who have been driving proudly, big vehicles are stuck. So this is our big vehicle. Paul Oweti Kisara, or Paul Kisara Oweti, his father is a brother to my father. Paul uh, has arrived here with his wife, Margaret Caridone. Then, of course, I have two young children here, the last young children that I worked on their mother so much. The madam there is called Evelyn Nyaoke. Evelyn is the fourth born of my mother there, but also my first born. She is a principal of a high school in where? In Brusia, Uganda, if you, if you have food. But in Brusia, Kenya, if you have no food. Finally, uh, Professor, you may not know this, this young man. Uh, I think you must have met somewhere in the wilderness. This is also my son, Michael Odong Origa. He's my son, a retired uh, college principal, retired from Marovo uh, Technical School, now living in Rongo and represents our interests here in, in Miguri County, Rongo sub-county. I think I will not left anybody out, uh, at least from my side, not from my side. But I want to introduce two of my very able staff members that uh, have been working with me here. And, um, because they have become my family. That is uh, Sophia Nyambane, working in uh, my office at uh, Research and Extension, and uh, Mr. Mary Zimbosa, working in the same place. We fear that in case we got this thing, we might not be at the same level. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor K. Uwar. And we welcome the family of Professor K. Uwar in this uh, meeting today. Uh, I'm trying to get my bearing on the, we finished with the introductions. And uh, I see introduction of the other guests. I don't know, Agustino, if I'm right.
punya stud Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Chair of Council and Council Members of Rongo University, guests present. Uh, Joseph Riga was my classmate at Cardinal Otunga, 1977 to 1978. So I'm, I'm, I'm having a great pleasure to know that you also know JB whom we have worked with for a long time. Thank you, Joseph, for coming. And uh, other guests who have come to this meeting, to the inaugural lecture, the first of its kind in Rongo University, have been given opportunity to read the citation, the citation for Professor Okeo Uor, whom I have worked with in Moi University for many years. And we have worked in Rongo again for many years. So I have known Professor Joas Barakoke Uor for many, many years. I have the honor today to read the citation which gives the background of Professor Joas Barakoke Uor. Professor J.B. Oke Uor was born on 10th of July 1949 at a time of crop harvesting. He grew up in the vicinity of Nyando wetland in an area frequently flooded with water from upstream Nyando River and its tributaries. Indeed, JB can be safely referred to as a wetland animal, just like frogs and fish, and it is doubtful if he can survive without being born in Nyando uh, wetlands. Following severe flood which occurred in nine, between 1949 and 1950, the parents of JB migrated from the flooded Anuro area, now sublocation, to the present Ogenya sublocation, where he has set up a home for the family today, even closer to Nyando Wetland. JB grew up at Kachacha village, in Hare village, Ogenya sublocation, where I am. Where as a young boy, he enjoyed playing with others in the mud and looking after the father's cows or parts of Nyando wetlands, the sage rich Odega swamp. Where we would where we would learn how to make wetland products such as mats, fish gears, and among others. During rainy season. We would enjoy petty fishing in the shallow, flooded parts of Odega Swamp, an activity enjoyed by youth even today. At school age, I was enrolled in a local AIC church based nursery school called Haro Day School before joining Ugwe Primary School some four kilometers from home. Other pupils from Haro Day schools also joined the Ugwe Primary School, and we enjoyed going to school, playing in the wetlands, and petty fishing together for four years before graduating to Bunde Intermediate School. To join an intermediate school such as Bunde, one had to sit the National Common Entrance Examination CE in class four, which I sat and passed. National Bunde Intermediate School located at the tail end of Nyando Wetland and two kilometers from Nyando River. Indeed, the school's distance from homes, about six kilometers, presented many difficulties for young school children like JB, who had to arrive as early as 6 a.m. and leave as late as 6 to 7 p.m. No wonder none of us gained enough grade to join any secondary school after sitting the Kenya School Examination, KPE, in class eight. Passing this examination would have removed me from living in Nyando Wetland, saved me, saved me from the burden and raised my standard of education, saved me from tending the large herd of cattle 
at home and working in the tedious rice plantation, among others. Thanks to my elder brother Julius for deciding that I repeat class 8 at Sare Primary School in Kamagambo, upon which I joined Rapogi School between 1966 to 1969, popularly known as Paradise for its excellent academic performance. Disciplined and having freedom, in 1972 to 71, JB was at Kamusinga High School before joining University of Nairobi between 1972 to 1975 for a degree in general agriculture, where he later graduated with a Master's of Science, a Master of Science degree in entomology. He studied at the University of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, between 1983 to 1987 for his doctoral, doctor of philosophy degree and graduated in 1988. JB has a wide working experience. Between 1977 and 79, he was a senior research officer, crop protection at the National Horticultural Research Station, Thika, Kenya, before joining the International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology, ISIPE at Beta Point Field Station as a research associate. Upon obtaining PhD degree, he was promoted to the position of senior research scientist and posted to Magadisu, Somalia, to head the PestNet research and training program, as well as being ISIPE representative in the country between 1988 to 1990. While at ICP, JB conducted extensive research on population, ecology, biology, biological control, and integrated pest management of numerous pest, crop pests, especially grain legumes, notably cowpeas, cereals, sorghum and maize, and horticulture. JB was promoted and became the managing director, chief executive officer of the Lake Basin Development Authority LBDA between 1990 and 1994 on a three-year study leave from Mississippi, Kenya, which helped to help him to reorganize and improve its performance. He brought in numerous donors-funded projects, some of which are still being implemented in the Lake Victoria Basin, Kenya. For example, Aquaculture LVB, which was funded by UNDP Belgium, Survival Fund, uh, FAO, the Rural Domestic Water and Sanitation Program, Dutch funded, Wetlands Rainfed Rice Project, UDP, ADF, among others. In 1994, JB joined ISIPE and went to head the new Muhaka Research Station at the South Coast, Kenya, where in collaboration with KWS, he also initiated research on population dynamics and control of sese flies at Simba Hills, Game Park, and its environs. JB joined Moy University in 1996 as a senior lecturer and later associate professor and headed the Department of Environmental Biology, Health, uh, Biology and Health in the School of Environmental Studies where he conducted research on wetland ecology and biodiversity in Lake Victoria Basin. He also taught numerous courses in ecology, biodiversity, environmental research methods, and many others. When SES was moved to University of Eldoret, he was part of the team that moved from Moy University in, 19, uh, in 2011 and continued as a lecturer and researcher in the same department. JB became a professor in, in 2022 at the University of Eldoret, where he joined Rongo University in the same capacity and with similar duties and responsibilities. JB has a wide experience in research, project implementation, and providing consultancy and training services in Kenya and other countries. He has a strong collaboration work network research organization and scientists 
in the East African region, East and Central Africa, West Africa, and uh, and I think this is Asian countries. At regional level, JB is well known is, is well known for his vast scientific knowledge and participating in many scientific and development undertakings, including collaboration with LVBC and others like LVMP, one and two, LVFO, Scaleways projects, and many others. In Kenya, the following project has received full participation and technical support from Sondu Miriu Hydroelectric Project, JB Kirima Oloch Small Polder Irrigation Project, Climate Adaptation Program, among others. This inaugural lecture only addresses how JB has engaged in the last 20 years. He has supervised and monitored, and sorry, he has supervised and mentored many postgraduate students, PhD and master's levels at national and international levels. He has been appointed board member of management of Lake Victoria South Water Services Project, appointed by the Kenya government. He is an excellent professional and academician and has achieved a lot of thought, has received a lot of has received a lot throughout the years of his work. He has published widely in refereed journals and contributed to book chapters while also participating in numerous national, international workshops and conferences. He has founded and managed some key NGOs such as Environment Oceanella, Victoria Institute of Research and Environmental Development, VIRED, International, Ohio Lake, Lake Forum, and many others, all of which have been instrumental in conducting research and promoting community-based conservation in Lake Victoria Basin. Upon this and other activities, JB has received presidential decoration of the, old, of the elder of the burning spear of Kenya, best environmental award by East African Environmental Network, through this organization, JB has developed and implemented many successful and well-funded collaborative research and conservation programs such as the ecology and livelihood of the African wetlands, funded by the government of the Netherlands. The sex for fish, various donors, among Trudy Sule project, climate adaptation project, community-based approach for Nyando wetlands project. We're almost there. Flood migration project in Nyando River Basin, food for work from control project, women food entrepreneurs in Kenya and Burkina Faso, and many other projects that have been coordinated by JB. Rongo University Council members, ladies and gentlemen, I now wish to take this unique opportunity to present to you Professor Joash Barak Oke Uwur and invite him to give his inaugural lecture, which is the first of its kind at Rongo University. Please, may we stand up and clap for JB. Yeah, continue clapping. Thank you so much, Professor Joash Barak Oke Uwur. The floor is yours. Thank you. Please let us sit down. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Gudu, my friend and colleague for many years, in which, during which we have walked the scientific world in collecting data developing ideas and seeing them realize, being realized into real action. I want to be grateful to the entire Rongo University community for giving me this opportunity to present 
Though rather briefly, this um, talk, indeed, this is just one of the small things that I have, uh, all I remember I have done. But uh, in this world, you don't end up without doing anything. Otherwise, you will not go to heaven. I think many of us could easily go to hell because there there is an opportunity to even do more things. In heaven, we will just clap, eat, and sing. You will have finished your role here on earth. Yes, uh, <coughs> the statement read by the vice chancellor is all true and i think my family those who know me well will attest to it there are two people here who i think know me very very well and who also benefited from my wetland activities uh, michael are you there he uh, is still putting on the wetland uh, kaunda suit that I made for him. And it's not a joke uh, because this, this was my art and craft. And so it's not surprising that I have uh, judiciously followed the processes that occur and control in the wetlands even today presentation I think I have been introduced. This presentation is dedicated to Nyando Wetland. Note that Nyando Wetland is the only wetland in the world. Note that Nyando Wetland is the only wetland in Africa. Note that Nyando Wetland is the only wetland in East Africa and Kenya. But because it presents the best of the examples of how, you know, the wet, uh, how wetland ecosystems are valuable, can be wealth rather than anything else and need to be sustainably managed. We have a lot of publications about wetland management, but we equally we have similar publications about wetlands as wastelands. So let me give you uh, an, invit an uh, definition of what internationally we are calling a wetland. A wetland is an area of marsh, fen, peatland, water, whether with natural or artificial systems, with water that is static, brackish, with water that is saline, the depth of which does not exceed six meters. This is a definition provided for international wetland management by the Wetland Convention, the Ramsar Convention of on Wetlands. So really, it doesn't mean that wetlands have to be shallow or, or deeper than six 
matters. But this is just a rough definition to provide guidance. This internationally defined definition encourages diverse, sorry, encompasses diverse landscapes whereby three inherent wetland ecosystems can be found. One is the land with water or permanent water or temporary water the soil which is hydric and the vegetation that loves water that is usually adapted to living in water indeed of course it's not only vegetation but also people that live in water most of their time i'm not saying that i'm one of those people uh, I will go to court uh, for Professor Budo telling me that I I actually was born in there and lived there. But don't worry, that is what what land is all about. The definition was dom domesticated in Kenya in 1994. And Kenya today, as a member of Ramsar Convention, uses this definition to protect its own wetlands. There are, what I am describing here is similar all along. So because of time, I'll skip a few areas. Wetlands are classified in different ways depending on which country you are coming from. But in general, we have seven classes or groups of wetlands. One of them is called lacustrine, the areas that are around the lakes and all fresh water. Rooted vegetation wetlands, for example, the Nyando wetland I'm about to describe is characterized by rooted uh, grasses and other vegetation dominated by papyrus. In the mountains of Kenya or East Africa, there are also wetlands. I am not sure whether the people in the Kenyan mountain who are fighting for next election know that they could swim in the wetland that is in there. We also have coastal wet and mangrove wetlands, and we have constructed wetlands. All these characteristics have different definitions and, and different areas and circumstances where plants of different characters la live. The other thing that I want to say is that, uh, and this is related to the fact that many people have thought for many years that wetlands are, are wastelands and actually should be reclaimed and used differently. Here in uh, Migori County, Several wetlands do exist, and you can see people struggling to get them out of the way to grow rice, to grow crops, to grow sugarcane. In fact, the sugarcane plantation here, three quarters of that land was wetland. I went to school here, and I know about that. So today, even as we know the, about the importance of wetlands and the resources that they provide, we still think that they are useless. But let me just give you just a few benefits or services provided by wetlands. The first one is what we call provisional services, where wetlands most directly 
and easily provide services to human beings. Services like water provision, quality water, in my home area, and I think in many homes in Africa, if you want to be sure that you get quality water, at that time, drink water from the wetlands. Don't bother about the color. That wetland water is good. In any case, most people now making water, what do we call funeral water? Is it, is it funeral water? This, this kind of thing here. You know, you can only enjoy carrying the container up to your home and then throw it away. But the truth is that that water is largely sourced from wetlands. The second issue is regulatory function. Wetlands help in regulating all processes related to water quality, sediment loading, climate change, and so on and so on. And indeed, so at least in my home, who work in wetlands do testify to the fact that wetlands in Nyando River Basin are better to work in than working outside in drier areas. They work for longer hours and they achieve more. Other people who are toiling in drier areas work for shorter time and achieve less. Then, of course, we have supportive services. Wetlands support a number of uh, other functions, including soil fertility and so on, including nutrient cycling. And so, if you have a wetland near you, please do not destroy it. But that is the general characteristics of wetlands around the world. In the Victoria Basin, where we we have the small and large wetlands which have different characters but which are very beneficial and that probably explains why these uh, uh, analytics came all the way here yeah, sometimes some of them say they came from from um, where where jesus was born following the uh, the nile to Lake Victoria to be able to find out the root cause of water that leads to Egypt and also to be able to control the wealth that we are now wondering today. All of this particular region, the region, the wetland of Lake Victoria. Victoria is an important ecosystem. It has an economic resource. It has an environment, an ecological resource, and it links the six countries or now seven that contribute to East African community. The Lake Victoria Basin has value. I think every year its value keeps on increasing. As at uh, early, uh, uh, early 2000, it was valued as US dollars 12.4 billion. If I was given this, I would campaign and become the president of Kenya. Just because of that value. <clears throat> and it is an important 
area that is shared by the, every country in the region without necessarily complaining. The Victoria Basin has a unique area of environmental, it's a unique area of environmental, cultural, scientific, socio-economic, immense natural resources and huge investment. Today, the East African community countries are seeing this benefit and every country would like to have their share. And it is a unifying factor, actually, in this particular area. And one of the most important things in the basin are the wetlands in the basin. Well, I think uh, people who have uh, lived here for a long time know that map. And the map uh, presents to you the Lake Victoria Basin in the three main countries, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and of course, uh, shared by Burundi <coughs> and Rwanda. Uh, in uh, the Lake Victoria Basin, there are numerous wetlands. I care to just mention a few that are important. But it is important to know that the whole area of 167 square kilometers of land is under wetlands. What we are doing with it, how we are protecting it, and its benefits are key to each indigenous, each to the people that live around it, and even people who use the resources beyond. In Kenya, 3.4 of um, land in Kenya, the whole of Kenya, over 14,000 is under wetlands. And indeed, very important wetlands that support a lot of livelihoods and ecosystems around. Kenya's portion of Lake Victoria constitute 30 percent of the total land area in Kenya. And so that is just the large wetlands, but there are several small wetlands that are equally vital. Uh, in uh, Lake Victoria Basin here, we have about 600 smaller wetlands that feed into large wetlands before they get into the Lake Victoria. It is important that to know that these wetlands are not just there, they are created naturally or by flowing rivers or other small dams and so on and so forth. Once they are created, it is for us to determine how we can protect them. Uh, I want to describe a little bit of the geographical scope of Nyanda wetland, but I think because of time, I will scope and go to other important areas. Nyanda wetland, which we are studying today, is one of the most productive actually in the region. It has rich biodiversity, it is used by many people, it provides livelihood for many people, and it provides in for many other people. 
the people who stood there, I'm not sure if they have never, they can uh, attest to having never used any wetland product. And indeed, most of the people, in fact, not um, located between uh, the canoe plains and the Nakati plains in Kisumu County. But it serves many other including areas that do not necessarily fall in Kisumu County. I have talked about the weather, but uh, the weather I want to mention here is the issue of rainfall patterns. You know, the wetlands and the surrounding has relatively poor rainfall patterns or low. And therefore, most of the water that forms the wetland come from upstream. And come through you know, the wetland, through canoe plains, to Winam Gulf before getting into, before into the, the Lake Victoria. And you can see that expensive uh, area as the Nyanda River catchment. All that water that comes from up, upstream enter that small area and forms Nyanda wetland. And uh, comparing that, you can also see now what even after a lot of destruction, Nyanda wetland is.